What's going on, everybody? This is Maximilian, and for whatever reason, my A40s are suddenly working again. I have no idea what's going on. It's some mysterious glitch with my mix amp or something. I have no idea. I may still send it in for a warranty evaluation just in case this is some issue that just isn't happening to rear its ugly head right now. Anywho, let's get on to some magic because I know you guys haven't had a good dose of Duels of the Planeswalkers in a while. In a couple of weeks, actually. So we're going to try and get back on track with that. As you can see, I've gotten a little bit of a head start here. And that's because, well, I, I got curious after that first video. I really wanted to try out some of the some of the other decks, see just how good these guys were. And, uh, well, they're they're not too difficult. I think we can uh, do fairly well against them with the white deck that we are going to... Uh, we picked up against Koth. So we're going to go ahead and fight Tezzeret this time. Just because I think I'd much rather fight Tezzeret. And we did unlock a couple of other decks, but seeing as how I'd like to kind of start this off as a campaign and work with the parts that I would normally have from the beginning, kind of cheated by uh, working ahead and getting Tesseract deck. I'm going to stick with Wielding Steel. I just because I, I like the deck a lot more than the, than Tesseract deck. Tesseract feels too clunky. Most of the multicolored decks in this format feel a little bit too clunky, especially when you're going one-on-one. -on -one. Now granted, some of them are actually quite good in multiplayer, as I found out from playing with a couple friends of mine. But... I just tend to like the monocolor decks in these games better because the cards aren't the greatest and when you have only one color to worry about, you suddenly don't have to worry about getting screwed out of a color. And it makes playing the game a lot easier on you. This is an absolutely fine hand to keep. Um, playing Tezzeret is kind of like, I, th I think he's playing more of a control thing if I remember correctly. Uh, so we're going to want to start aggressively. Right? So I'll go ahead and drop a 2 1 for 1. Definitely one of the best opening plays in Magic if you're a weenie deck. And we'll pass that on to the Tesseract and we'll see what he has here. I know he's playing blue black. The question is, what kind of threats does he have? I know he's artifact themed, but I can't remember exactly what the blue in his deck. Uh, let's see. I believe we're going to play Lawkeeper and then get in there for some beats. Not really much of a reason to play the Kite Seal. We want to get. Um, we want to get the Law Keeper on the field as soon as possible, so that way we can get him past summoning sickness and tap down any opposing threats. He's definitely one of the more underrated cards in the deck. I mean, he's a cheap 1-1 one, one for 1, but the ability to tap down your opponent's creatures repeatedly is definitely nothing to stop at. Uh, especially in a game like this, where you're not necessarily seeing cards that are, we would call in the Magic World, constructed playable. That is, cards that are good enough to be played in these tournaments. Uh, it's all about the bombs and the uh, the big, the random big threats they have in these decks. So if you can throw out a, uh, if you can throw out something like Gideon's Lawkeeper to tap them down, tap down their big threat consistently, you've got a huge advantage in the game. Now I'm just going to stick with, um, actually I'm going to attack with both of them. It's pretty much safe to do so here because I'm almost certain, and I, I would say that because I, I want to leave myself a little bit of wave over here in the event that I just happen to be wrong. And I'm almost certain that nothing in his deck has haste, so we should be okay here. I think his deck will have summoning sickness anyway, so we don't have to worry about tapping down his big threats because they're not going to be able to attack us anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit him for as much as possible as quickly as I can, because right now he seems to be missing... Well, speak of the devil, there's his other color. He hasn't played... Ooh, he finally played something. Etched Champion. Okay. That's a card we're probably going to have to look out for, because I know he plays a ton of artifacts in that deck, and if that thing gets protection from colors, and he puts in some kind of an equipment on it, then we could be in a bit of trouble. Now, Bookmaster will alleviate um, a little bit of work that will need to be done by Gideon's Lockkeeper, because that taps down a creature for us as it enters the battlefield. This will help us to improve our tempo a little bit, and that way I can get a free swing out of Gideon's Lockkeeper and get it for an extra 1 damage this turn without having to worry to hold him back. Alright. Three more damage. Yes. Mmm. Goody goody. Now for those of you who do have this game, and you happen to play with friends online, a deck that I would highly recommend that you play for multiplayer, assuming that you don't have any of the expansion packs, because well, I don't have the expansion packs, and I'm not entirely certain. Um what exactly is in the expansion packs as far as decks go. Uh, from what I have found out, the blue-green deck is actually really good for multiplayer, especially if both of you are running it, because while it's not the most consistent deck in the world, it has the ability to drop some of the most ridiculous threats in this game, 
and it does it so quickly that it's it's essentially unstoppable. So I am going to. So what am I going to do here? Ah. Uh, yeah, I guess we can play Sarah Angel here. If he gets Metalcraft, then we can't tap down this guy anyway. It's not a big deal. Okay, he's going to fetch a response. That's fine. And I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to swing with my 2-2, two, two, see if I can't bait him into blocking here. I don't want to lose that 2-1 beater at the moment. I'd much rather just tap him down, so that way I can clear the skies for Sarah Angel to get in there. At the rate we're going, we're actually doing damage fairly efficiently. He's only at 10 life, so he should be able to at least win this match in a couple of turns. Especially with Lawkeeper on the board, that way we'll be able to get rid of any flying blockers he might have. Okay, we don't really care about his Ethereum Sculptor, because at the moment he's so far behind that that's not going to help him catch up very much. That, uh, and now he's got Metalcraft, unfortunately. So that Edge Champion has protection from all colors, which means we can't tap it, block it, enchant it, or deal damage to it. That shouldn't be a problem, though, because he's essentially out of the game at the moment. I believe... Yeah, why don't we... Rather than playing that Stone Fortress in this turn, we'll activate Gideon's Lawkeeper's ability and tap down his flyer. And then we'll arrest his other guy... Now this way, he has nothing to block this turn. We can get in for 8 damage and then threaten lethal next turn, since I'll be able to tap down his flyer. And then he won't have anything to block the Sarah Angel, which should be enough to kill him. I'm assuming he can't deal 18 damage to me in one turn. Now, barring any kind of absolute insanity from his deck, and I'm pretty sure his deck doesn't have anything like that, uh, we're going to win this one. That's another reason why I like the white deck. Like, it doesn't come across as being absurdly powerful. It doesn't have any threats that are just absolutely ridiculous, over-the-top things you can't handle. But it's very consistent in the way it pans out its mana curve. The way it um, goes from its 1-drops to its 4-drop and 5-drops. It's able to assemble a, a very nice uh, very nice team of attackers. And it's got some great synergy with being able to interact with the opponent and the creatures that they play as well. Alright, and I think we've got it here. Unless I want to make sure none of his creatures have reach. Uh, Alright, good. None of his creatures have reach, so we're going to activate Lawkeeper's ability. Tap down his only flyer. He's tapped out for mana, so he can't respond to this if he wanted to. And now, we move to attacks. I swing in with my 4-4 flyer that he has nothing to block with, and that is the game. Or is it? Yes, it's the game. Haha! -ha, victory! Yet another incredible... No, it wasn't even a comeback. I, w I was just a beating. Just a massacre of Tezzeret, because he really can't play anything until his third or fourth turn, and when you're playing against the Weenie deck, that has tons of one-drops and gets creatures onto the board very quickly, it makes it very hard to stabilize, unless you have something that can just absolutely do a devastating amount of impact on the board. So that's basically... Uh, playing a white deck against Tezzeret. Tezzeret's is okay. I don't really care for it. But I've unlocked two new cards. Ooh, Revoke Existence. Yay. Good sideboard card. And I think, yeah, I think we'll play Kiora too on the next one. But we'll wait for the next episode for that. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Thanks for being patient for me, getting up all these videos, and dealing with my random mishaps and misfortune with my Asteroid 40s. I have no idea why. Suddenly they're working now, and I'm taking advantage of it. So... Hopefully I will see you guys soon. Be sure to look for the next Pokemon installment. Until then, this is Maximilian.